Hey folks, thanks for checking out this ND add-on update video. So we've got some pretty exciting uh, features to show you today, but just before I show you those, I wanna just talk to you guys about one quick thing. So as you know, ND is a free add-on and it will always be free for anyone anywhere in the world. Um, but you know, like all software, it takes resources and time to make. So for those of you who would love to support the ongoing development and maintenance of the ND Blender add-on, we now have a huge menace uh, Patreon account with two specific tiers. We got Triangle and Quad. Uh, you can make the connection there. Uh, so yeah, if you'd love to support us, this will be a really awesome way to do that. And it'll just help ensure that we have all the time and the resources to really make this uh, an awesome add-on for the community. Awesome. All right, let's get into the features. The first feature I want to go through is the addition of some shortcut keys to the operator overlays. So if I select my plane here and just run, uh, say, a solidify operator here, um, just give it some thickness, uh, you'll see that any operator option that is a toggle or cyclic in nature um, now has uh, shortcut keys next to it. So if you notice this T key here next to waiting, um, this basically allows you to just simply tap that key now to actually cycle through those options. So previously, and you can still do it if you want to, you can hold down the Alt key and simply cycle through the values using the mouse scroll wheel, the up and down arrow keys, the WASD keys, you know, but if you want to save just a, you know, bit of time or just get into the habit of, you know, learning the shortcuts, you can now just tap the T key. Um, and this is going to be across all of the operators now. So basically any operator that currently has a toggle option or something that's cyclic in nature will have the shortcut key next to it. And if there's obviously multiple, you know, multiple different shortcut keys. All right, so the next feature we wanna go through is a new uh, Boolean operation. So if I select my object here, and just create a duplicate of it and say, put it over here. Uh, let's select these two objects and run a Boolean operation on them. So. We currently have the three default blender built-in types, difference, union, and intersect. We do have a special slice, and now we have this new inset and outset operation. So if I select that and scroll around, you'll notice that this allows us to do some pretty cool uh, inset booleans. And if we hit, you can see there's another option there with a shortcut key next to it, mode. So we can hit M um, and turn that into an outset. So yeah, really nice little addition there, just an extra type of Boolean. And this is a great, um, you know, Boolean type for creating sort of hard surface panels or any kind of inset or outset details quite quickly and easily. All right, so the next feature I want to show you is if we select this cube, for instance, and run a bevel on this and give it a few segments here, uh, you'll notice we have a new option down the bottom called Harden Normal. So if we hit the H key, you can just see how that, it almost applies a similar effect to weighted normals. It just helps to keep the faces uh, looking a lot better once there's a, uh, a bevel applied to your object. So you can turn that on and off now, just hitting the H key or hitting uh, Control Alt and then simply cycling through the values there. Um, while we're on the, the topic of bevels, if I simply apply this bevel and bring up the geo lift operator, so currently, and has, as has always worked, um, it'll actually you know, take into account all the bevels on your object. But say, for instance, you wanted to grab one of these faces and you didn't want the bevels applied when you're doing a geolift, you can now select geolift. And if you notice, there's a new shift key you can hold down when you select it. When you do that, all the bevels will be removed and you'll be left with just the base geometry you can select from. So um, that was one of the requested features on Discord, and I think that's a pretty cool uh, little addition to GeoLift. All right, so while we're on the topic of bevels, uh, the next thing I want to show you is a new operator called Edge Bevel. So if we have a look at this cube, for instance, and jump into edit mode, and I select one of these edges here um, and bring up the bevels menu, you can see under vertex bevel, we now have an edge bevel. So with edge bevel selected, we got quite a few options here we can uh, roll through, but the very first one is this weight setting. So as you can see, when I move my mouse, you know, back and forth here to adjust this value, um, we're getting a bevel applied. But I think the important thing to note is this is a completely non-destructive bevel um, being applied to this edge. So, you know, we can set the segments over here and adjust the size, um, commit that. Let's select this edge back here and also run an edge bevel um, and maybe even just increase the segment count to make that a bit smoother um, and commit that. So you can see we've added two bevels to this cube now, um, but again, this is on an edge by edge basis and again, completely non-destructive. So if you wanted to remove them or change any of their settings, such as the overall amount, uh, you can do so. 
Now there's one important thing to note about this operation type is, um, so if I just jump back into edit mode, um, the way this works is basically um, you have an overall width. So um, if we change this to say, um, let's go to 500, um, this means that the biggest bevel you can have while in this mode is 500 units. So if we have a look at the weight and scroll all the way up to a weight of one, it is basically the equivalent of the full width, so 500 units. If we scroll all the way to 0.5, it's 250. All the way down to zero, it's zero. So something to keep in mind um, that you want to set your width here to what you think the biggest wet, uh, bevel width will be, um, and then adjust the weighting to suit. So um, once you've done that, um, that'll affect all the bevels, um, sorry, all the edge bevels in this operation. So if you do change your bevel width, all of them will be affected when you do this. And the same thing goes for segments. So um, while it's a cool operation, it has some limitations in that sense, but it's just something you need to know when you use it. Um, you can't create sort of a separate bevel on each edge um, with a di different uh, sort of unique width or segment count that doesn't get affected by the other bevels. Obviously, if you want to do that, um, you'd be going into the realm of more destructive geometry, um, just using regular bevels and blender, but at least this way you do have some options to do edge by edge bevels non-destructively. All right, so the next uh, operator we wanna show you, which has just been added, is the new lattice operator. So if you have an object selected and then select lattice, um, it'll place this lattice object around the volume um, of your specific object. And you can change uh, basically the resolution, which is the U, V, and W points on this. So if we scroll in a value, say, of three uh, uniform across the board um, and click, and then jump into edit mode, uh, we can select, say, three of these vertices here and pull this out a bit. Now, this is a, a cool way to create um, sort of distortion or some um, other more organic shapes or just some sort of adjustments to your mesh uh, non-destructively. So you're not actually changing the underlying geometry. It's just using the lattice to influence sort of the distortion or offset. Um, so this can be turned on and off, and you always have your original um, undestructive geometry um, under the hood, um, and yeah, it just allows you to do some cool things uh, that you wouldn't normally be able to do uh, without breaking out of the non-destructive workflow and going into more destructive poly modeling. So just another cool option there, yeah, but in your toolkit. All right, so the next one here was a another requested feature. So if you have, um, I don't know, what's a good example, just go to, uh, let's just do normal bevel. Um, this little floating overlay that follows your mouse around, if you obviously hit the P key, P key to pin it um, and then apply and then bring it back up again. Um, it goes back to following your mouse and it doesn't stay where you left it last time. And that's cool. I mean, some people like me enjoy that, but if you want it to stay exactly where you left it, um, next time you recall this and any other operator, you can now go to edit preferences and under the add-on, there is a new lock overlay pinning option. So if we turn that on, and then bring up the bevel operator again. And I put my mouse sort of up here and hit the P key to pin and then apply it. If I bring up the bevel operator again next time, it's back to where I left it. And that applies to anything. So if I bring up uh, the array operator, it again will be sitting back up there where I left it. So if you enjoy having the overlay sit in a specific region in the viewport, you can sort of put your mouse there, hit pin, obviously make sure pin uh, overlays is turned on the settings and then, you know, Bob's your uncle. All right, well, that is all the um, sort of most significant changes in this update. There's a few other things that have happened, some bug fixes, some other enhancements. If you want to see the full list, just make sure you check out the change log. Um, and like always, you know, I'm very happy to hear you guys' feedback. Please join our Discord channel. There's a link down in the description below, as well as a link to the Patreon page. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see what you guys are doing, what you think, and if you have any other uh, feature requests or suggestions. Awesome. I'll catch you next time, guys. Happy modeling.